All right, we should be back in the proper place. More or less, hopefully you can see the old uh, pointer there. It didn't show up through most of the last recording, but assuming you can infer stuff. So what we're doing here, we're starting brush work. What's the big deal about that, you ask? Well, the big deal about brushwork is that it's not highly textured, right? So now we're doing, uh, what did Jansen call it? These things have technical names. I forgot all the technical names years ago. Um, I don't care. Technically, this brush is called a bright, I believe. It's a short, bristled, flat. Um, it's about an inch or so wide. Pretty uh, good, good medium-sized bright. Um, I usually don't use brights, but this time I did. And uh, I actually like the effect. And we're going to start here with... Uh, just laying in shapes. It has the effect of, like I said, it's not textured. It's it's much more graphic. Um, there's no glazes yet. There's no impasto glazing, so it's going to be fighting with the texture a little bit. But at this point in the in the in the game, it doesn't really, at least it doesn't bother bother me. It doesn't matter that much. Um, and you can see a little work going on there. Let's see if we can get to something more interesting. Flat shapes. Looks like we're throwing blues into here. Right now we're doing the in starting with something interesting where this is going to be reflection from a lot of the electric light over here. So we've got flat graphic shapes of red. Um, a lot of it is just super suggestive at this point. There's some color variation right um, within the, the range we've talked about. Um, and, you know, you should be able to see when there's like a little flare of you know, orange or ochre or something, um, you know, and a little flare of blue and a little flare of whatever. And I mean, you, you can tell there's just some varying color space. You can we start getting some nice color contrast here. Um, and we're starting to get some spots of intense color around other than just like this electric sky that's going on, which stays way too electric, way too long. Um, it kind of becomes the defining feature of this too. You have this band of electric sky in there, which is fine because um, you have uh, this, you know, high key sky over here, and we build a high key um, artificial light thing happening over here, and it's a nice interplay um, with spots of red, and you know, color-wise, that's what's going on. Let's get past the shoulder here. Again, I, I move the. <laughs> I'm still experimenting with recording positioning at this point, and and so there may be a little too much shoulder in this part of it. But I want you to see the. I want you to see the the evolution of the painting, and just some of the recordings aren't great at this point. I'm gonna lay some graphic shapes here. Nice graphic stuff. You can see we're like we're we're totally different. Just visual effect with the with bright uh, bright brush and flat color. Now we're starting to juxtapose graphic shapes with this highly textured stuff and uh, it gets cool. This is uh, let's let's watch that. Sorry for the close up of the old schnoz there. There we go. All right. Again, I get the the recording angles down better. So, what what is this point of the painting? Well, it's, I don't know if it's hard to explain, but um, 
conceptually, we're doing much the same thing we were doing before. We do pretty much all through the painting until the last layer or two where we're really honing in on detail, right? But what's happening is the detail is sort of coming together. Um, so we have this big textured, broad base, okay? And um, it's a little more precision with the knife than we have a little bit more precision with these graphic paint layers. And these things should start fighting each other, or not, not fighting, but sort of humming off of one another and creating some kind of tension, right? You should start to see some kind of tension between these big textured areas here and these big graphical shapes here, these big graphic color shapes here. Um, and like technically this big textured place is moving through the spectrum, right? Um, let's just make sure we're seeing the pointer. So, so this is moving through spec. We've got, um, you know, yellow to, to orange, you know, and then into, to blues. I mean, you're essentially moving through spectrum with the light, but these are doing it too. These, these nice flat graphic areas. Okay. So, um, so now it's not just color contrast, it's shape contrast, right? It's um, the type, I mean, just you have this stuff that's way flatter and way more precise than this textured stuff there. And these layers should start sort of like humming off of one another. Then you're gonna have another layer of something that's humming off that and another layer. And so what, and every time we're, we're adding a new layer, we're um we're getting more precise with our shape and more precise with the location of their those shapes and most of the time in between those layers if there's a real big difference between those we're adding a layer of impasto glazing so you're building depth and and so you're going three three dimensional literally into the or out of the the initial surface right but every layer you move out, you're sort of like um, humming. You're sort of like have the nice little interference um, with the layer underneath it with separation. And you're starting to build color interest, visual interest, and spatial separation. Okay. So aside from the, the color variation between the layer or... <laughs> and the type of shape variation and the depth, we have what you'd normally associate with painting here, which is like your graphic shape. So we have this these hard, like horizontal bands here, and we have this, we're gonna have this hard vertical coming up here with more horizontal bands here, and these these repetitious shapes just suck in your eye. So we're really trying to balance shapes on each side so when we have some like really hard shape with a lot of contrast here i mean the contrast of something like this that's just going to suck your eye in no matter what right um so just so we're clear we've got to like counterbalance that over here and then this ends up having way more contrast than even that so now this is sucking in your eye so we got to do more over here and we're going to have these these um sort of big vertical lines come in and then there's going to be this this sort of horizontal line coming in here with spots of red and like, and so there's a lot of interesting interplay between things that should graphically just suck you in, but they're leading you into something else. And there's a lot of um, dynamic and hard graphic stuff coming in too. Now we have color contrast, texture versus graphic shape contrast. We have depth being built. We have multiple shapes overlapping one another where the more they overlap the more precise they get then we have contrast and repetition type so so there's just a there's a whole lot of things that just grab hold of your eye happening at once in this and and it, it's like writing a tiger kind of like to, to balance it out and uh it's just a blast so hopefully uh, stick around for it but, um we're continuing to push some more intense color into the flat graphic shapes by the brush. Um, you can see like I'm doing virtually no mixing of color on the surface here. These are, you know, I, I don't know what they, what they call them, spot color or, or whatever, but um, it's, it's kind of impressionistic, but, but also not. Because impressionism 
if you wanted to make, for example, if you're if you're a classical, if you're Monet, right, and you wanted to make this gradient here, you would have tons of little strokes here that um, made this gradient, right? Um, or if you had this, you know, some flat color shape here, you'd have a ton of little strokes in there that, that were blue and red. And, and if you backed up a little, they would all sort of visually come together with the eyes. Like, but this is just a shape. You just plop down the shape and there's way less variation of color within a shape. I mean, you can still see there is some, and it's, you know, it's fun. You want to get, you want to get, um, you, you don't want to perfectly mix color every time, at least not necessarily. And, and you want some variation in a stroke or something like that. But, um, but the impressionism quote unquote comes in, like when you have a large area like this and you see all this different broken color happening within a, a space, right? So now, um, I'm not just breaking the color, I'm breaking up the color and the technique, right? Um, and then it, it even gets crazier than that when I start to get uh, sort of drawing implements in there and I break up the technique even more, right? So, um, and so when you start like m merging all that crap, to, there's no, there's no other way to, nothing else to call it but like contemporary and you can start putting whatever fucking qualifier you want on it but it doesn't matter at this point in time you know you call it contemporary or modern or whatever the hell you want but all that means is by this point in time we can use whatever devices are out there that we want right whatever techniques whatever you know because this isn't a classical composition but it borrows from classical composition it borrows um, very much from uh, uh, graphic art and graphic design too. Oh, like I said, this will. Oh wow, is this going to be a voice situate? Oh, all right. Well, I was just pontificating about style. Anyway, we're going to build the impasto glaze. I talk a lot more about the glazing in the other video, um, so you can watch that if you really want to get get it down. But you know, I'm mixing big pools of color. I'm tailoring the uh, I'm tailoring the uh, the body and the the sort of properties of this paint as well um, with with different gels and mediums. Um, so I'm essentially getting a slightly liquid medium body thing. Um, and then these colors end up being the same colors on the palette we talked about before. And, and various combinations of those. Yeah, and you can see this is the impasto glaze. This is a bathrobe, um, because why not? You know, so we're mostly like uh, ultramarine up here. Uh, we get a little bit of the phthalo introduced into that for this sort of mid layer, right? Because I want some green as it approaches the um, the horizon. We get a little more browns and oranges in here, and then yellow here, and I want to start getting this sort of glow effect happening with the color. All right. I don't know how well you can see it because the color of light, I'm, I mean, this is daylight painting, so it looks like everything changed. Um, like I said, it's it's hard to see with with these horrible filming techniques of mine um, what's really going on with the color. But what's going on here is there's a new surface. That's kind of the most important thing. I mean, there's this color variation that's kind of hard to see in this natural, like overwhelming blue light of daytime that we're painting in now. Um, but 
as a painter, what you should be really understanding that's probably hard to see or impossible to see is that there is a new surface here. So all the scraping that happened, it has a new surface. All these paint layers, new surface. There's a whole new slick layer of uh, that was laid down in an impasto fashion, this slick gloss layer, and now paint is just sliding on it. And there's a whole, it's a whole new world of like color and graphic color. So now we're gonna start laying down some major graphic shapes and actually have the ability to lay them down more precisely and in, in, in much more sort of powerful fashion than we did before. Um, and like I said, we're starting to get smaller shapes and more precise. We're zeroing in on the subject matter. And I, let me fast forward till we get to some real interesting painting. Do we have anything here? Come on, bro. Yep, we're moving around with that color. Another contemporary technique, but probably, probably, uh, you know, innovated by the Impressionist. So we're probably going to carry that color around a couple different places now, all throughout. I don't remember if that we are. Oh, yep. Yeah. Remember, this is a truck. Oh, got that on here. You know, I'll just let that play through for a sec. Slight variations in color. Yeah, so what the thinking is here, like I'm not painting the road there. I'm not painting cars and road and stuff. I'm painting shape with color variation in it. Shape with color variation in it. Does it go toward the blue, toward the orange, toward the whatever, right? Fast forwarding here, it's hard to see that. You know, I like to keep stuff like this, but sometimes you just can't, right? That happens all over the place. You you generate interest in the first layer, but your next layer you may obliterate it and you may keep some. And then, you know, you just make that layer interesting. Well, let's watch this, huh? Sorry, I didn't mean to cover up any of the cool stuff. And then this layer, of course, has to be itself interesting. And then you're going to risk covering it up the next layer. I mean... And there's, there's very, I mean, this is very broken color, right? And again, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be sort of vibrating. That's a dual tone on a brush, right? It's probably intentional.
Did you see that? <laughs> Little flick of the brush. Well, first of all, you can start to see the shadow cast there, but that's not just a shadow. That's on top of an impasto glaze, so it's casting a shadow onto the layer underneath it. But then you saw the brush flip that had a little more yellow on it, and then each stroke that went down sort of like had this implied gradient here. Uh, it's kind of slick. I don't know. Is that? I wasn't expecting that. That's the. What is that? A happy, happy little accident. Is that what the, that that what it's called? We all understand that now. Love it. Like I said, I like paint. This could be anyone. I got to start doing commentary on others, dude. There. What's his name? Jansen, the guy who does florals, I watch his channel all the time. I left a comment on one of his videos. It was like, dude, watching you paint that vase was like watching the Super Bowl. It was, I was just, I was riveted, riveted the way. And um, I should do, I do just it's a straight up football commentary on that video. I, I was, I loved it. So I don't mean to be like, Again, I'll say it every time. I'm not trying to like fall in love with my own work. It's like, I'm, trust me, I'm my own harshest critic. But, but I like watching stuff come together, and I I do that with like Richard Musgrave Evans all the time. Um, his name is Jansen. I I can't believe it. I just I I just. <laughs> I've been geeking out on his paintings lately. And I like him because they're both so far out of my wheelhouse, right? That um, that it's fun to watch, right? So anyway, um, yeah, like watching a painting come together is like watching, it's like watching the Super Bowl. It's like watching a, a good game. And I like watching games, you know? Um, just look at this. Just look at how it's all coming together, though. Like you've seen it. Can you can you follow any one stroke, any one aspect of this painting where it came together and started looking like a, a complex like cityscape or something? Um, and then all of a sudden you just like you like shake your head and you look at it and it's like, oh, oh, that's getting interesting. There's some interesting shit. You know, and there and, and a lot of this is real regular at this point. I mean, it's still Oh, look, I'm starting to introduce some more texture back over it. Um, I think, oh, yeah, there you go. Look at that. Woo. Um, like I said, I I like paint. And uh, this is concrete down here. And, boy, there's just, uh, there's no getting around. Um, you know, when you scrape pa paint on with the palette knife and you get this little, this little speckled shade, you just can't beat it for concrete. I don't care how many little dots you put in there. I see plenty of artists who, who tr paint it all with dots. I've done that myself just fine. I totally get it. Um, but man, when you can like, when you can just develop a whole area in a couple of strokes of a palette knife, it's hard to beat, man. That is hard to beat. And just now, look at this. We just laid another type of um, graphic interest over top. We've just softened up a bunch of these shapes. We were just talking about how um, how regular all these one, you know, it's like the, the one inch bright or whatever the hell it was. Um, and I think I may be almost done with the one inch bright, like, because it's starting to not, you know, it's a little too regular, you know. And now look, we just have a tiny palette knife moving, uh, you know, moving some textured paint on top of it, you throw a little bit on the corner of a very graphic brush stroke and you just broke, you just broken the whole thing, you know? Did I just miss that? Oh, I just missed commenting on that. I want to make sure I, I get that and just, and we'll just watch it play by, ooh, yeah. Just ran through the whole spectrum there, boom. Boom. Yes. I know I geeked out about that in the other video, too, about this. Man, you just throw a, one stroke in and it just, like, says so much.
Nice. Remember, this, this is like a layer two down, this color, and then laying this on top of it. So we're almost matching this color here, but we're a couple layers removed, like an impasto glaze removed from it. And so your brain knows that this is way in front of this, even though this may be representing something that's more distant than this. And like, that's what you want to do. You want to play with someone's mind a little bit with this. Um, looks like we're starting to get some um, makings of uh, electric light happening here. You can just see just these couple of things we just punched the contrast up of the whole painting. I mean, like all this was fairly well, if not uniform, it was, it was within a narrow range of contrast and a couple of colors and a couple of values later. And we've just expanded that whole range. So, um, and now that's going to give us this entire new space to develop. So now you punched up a couple of highlights. You've, you just expanded the whole, the whole like, uh, key like the whole like contrast space and now you've got to start introducing that new range into this whole area and that's where it's going now and like here we go and like of course this isn't even the final layer it's not even close there's like there's a lot of layers in this painting the next one doesn't have nearly as many layers and it's way more naturalistic than this but i just kind of wanted to go super stylized with this and even then, I didn't get as much graphic stuff going. As I thought initially, let's watch you. Yeah, so there's like five colors on that palette knife by now. And with like natural light on the sign, I don't want to paint any graphic image on there. Even though I'm a graphic designer, I don't, I don't want to see like a Chick-fil-A or whatever on that sign. I want, I want the color interplay of whatever like out of the corner of your eye. Bam, I like that. That was fun. And it's hard to get something so precise as this big sign. I, I sort of um, wrestle with this thing the whole time. I like where it ended up because I ended up getting very painterly with the edges here, which we'll see eventually. But um, yeah. I mean, now look at this variation in here, just that. Oh, let's watch you go down. Look at how just a couple of scrapes completely changes like that, that geometric regularity of the brush strokes underneath. And you just break up a couple of edges here. Dang. Paint's amazing. It really, it's like human, like your, your perception, your, your <laughs> the way they, the mind grapples with like edges and repetition and regularity. And you can just do a couple of things to, to, to break it all up and um, I mean Musgrave Evans talks about it too a little bit I mean you can't do the kind of stuff that guy does and not understand that you're 
not understand that you're like messing with perception to like human ability to perceive like um like it's not rocket science you're really literally trying to trick the eye you know if i if i lay down a stroke that's close to you that's supposed to be representing something that's really far away that that immediately plays with your brain and your brain loves it because it just gets to play with the idea it's it's right out there it's right out in front for for the mind to get and the mind gets like oh it's a game you're playing with me. it's a yes let's you know out of the corner of your eye if this looks like light spilling from something onto concrete um that's cool and then you look at it you turn you turn toward it and it's and it's a scraped it's a palette knife scraped over nonchalantly. It's like, Ooh, that's, fun. you know, your mind, your mind loves to play the game, like in this nice little dialogue with the painting. Now look at this space, like, you know, five minutes ago, we were just talking about how all that space that was being created. And that was with, with the one inch bright, just started creating this visual interest of a cityscape. And now a couple of like, We've broken a couple edges. We're still in virtually the same color space with a few punched colors. Look at how much more depth and interest we have here, right? Like I said, you could, you know, I mean, this is unfinished, but if you're here, like you could almost have that be a completed painting in and of itself, right? If you liked a uh, certain type of modernism, I suppose. All right. So now we're at night. Again, sorry for the rapid shifts in color space here. Oh, am I going to draw? Um, there may very well, in fact, I wouldn't have started drawing if there wasn't, uh, I'll edit it in if I, if I can find it but there's likely, highly likely another impasto glaze that went over that um, because I, I, I would want to unify that surface again before I started drawing on top of it, right? So, so um, you could just see the sheen here. So there's another glaze, and we're just going to watch this. 